Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll know when I post new videos or go live. As you can tell from the title, this is a science talk article. It's very important information in all of my science talk videos. If you're not interested in science and technology, I suggest you do so quickly due to the advances and the new discoveries in science and technology as well as engineering. So in this article, they discuss a new form of DNA discovered inside living human cells. Lab work previously suggested the existence of eye motif structures, but only now have they been seen in natural conditions. And I will add to that, they've been seen in real time. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. This was published in The Independent 21 hours ago. There are several comments below. So we come down here to this image from the video. And to the left, you have a fluorescent image of a cell, a human cell. The blue area is the nucleus of the cell that's been stained with probably DAPI, D-A-P-I, which attaches itself to um, nuclear proteins, DNA as well, RNA. And the green area, that stained fluorescent dye, is tracking these eye motifs, which are loop structures that come off of a standard double helix of DNA. So the double helix on the right side is shown in a picture, a drawing, uh, with two double helix in white and the uh, nucleotide base pairs, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine seen in blue as the blue lines. But there are times where they recognized strange um, non-canonical or um, abnormal, in some cases, looping that occurs as the DNA is being replicated, meaning the DNA is reproducing itself. So this is the beauty of nature, the beauty of the creator providing our bodies the ability, our cells the ability to reproduce themselves. And now they're recognizing that there is a, another way DNA is able to replicate itself and able to probably pr repair itself as well due to external um, stimulus such as radiation stimulus that would include um, your diet, your level of activity, metabolism, and so forth. So what they did is they attached this Y-shaped structure in white, shaped like a Y, that's an antibody. They attached it to the green area, so it only recognizes that green color, that green fluorescent dye, um, GFP. And they're able to see that under the microscope on the left side within a real cell. They also have different um, motifs, double motifs, uh, such as the red that they've stained with the red fluorescent dye, perhaps like a M cherry or Tritzy, Texas red, something like that. The green would be like a Fitzy or um, Alexa 488, something like that. These are just the names of certain dyes that are used to see structures inside of cells. So they start off by saying a new DNA structure inside human cells known as the quote, eye motif, end quote, has been identified by scientists. This form resembles a twisted knot of DNA. Now, normally DNA does not twist in a knot. So when you see something like that, it, it sets you back a little bit. You're like, wait a minute. Unless you have chromatin binding, um, chromatin binding uh, with histones, um, chromatin realignment, 
that's where you see uh, it looks like beads on a string under the microscope. And these are things you can look up yourself. Um, don't take my word for it. Um, as LeVar Burton said, please go look it up for yourself. Chromatin, histone binding, um, DNA replication, DNA uh, RNA transcription, transcription processing, protein translation. These, these are topics that I suggest you look up. They say, instead of the well-known double helix first described by James Watson and Francis Crick, I will also add on uh, another young lady, McCorm I think her last name is McCormick as well. Lab work has previously suggested the existence of DNA in this form, but this is the first time it has been observed in living cells. The scientists are not exactly sure what the function the motif, I motif is, but they suspect it is involved with the process of reading DNA sequences and converting them into useful substances. So the useful substances would be proteins, enzymes. All enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. So DNA, um, there are different flavors of DNA. You have DNA that is um, transcribed into RNA, and then it has its job as a transcriptional regulator, such as a transcription factor. Um, androgen receptor is a transcription factor, but you also have uh, DNA that is transcribed into RNA and then goes further to be um, produced into different types of RNA, um, translational RNA, mRNA, um, you have, which is messenger RNA, the most abundant, the most important uh, RNA out there. You have rRNA, which is ribosomal RNA. You have snRNA, uh, which is the, um, like a, a SNP RNA, a RNA that's uh, specifically designed to promote mutations. So there's different types of RNA and the mRNA, tRNA, rRNA are involved in the production of proteins. Um, during RNA processing, mRNA processing, when you have the mature RNA, mRNA strand, it goes into the ribosome, the ribosomal RNA, to produce your proteins that you need. The proteins are then cut, processed through this assembly line of chaperone proteins and other factors that come in to help hold the structure in place. If the protein is needed to stay in the nucleus, it's processed for that. If the protein needs to leave the nucleus and go into the plasma membrane to be embedded in the plasma membrane or to live in the cytoplasm outside of the nucleus, it does that. So they're having issues trying to, to, trying to determine what the function is of this I motif DNA. So when most of us think of DNA, we think of the double helix, said Professor Daniel Christ, a molecular biologist at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research, who co-led the study describing the new findings. This new research reminds us that total, totally different DNA structures exist and can well be important for ourselves. It goes on to say, while I motifs have previously been observed under artificial conditions in laboratories, Prior to this work, it was unclear whether they existed in living cells. The findings of Professor Christ and his team were published in the scientific journal Nature Chemistry, and they have things um, highlighted in red. Let's see, I think that's the only one right here. Nature Chemistry is a very well-respected, reputable journal. I suggest you check it out. There's a lot of work being done with the environment, a lot of work being done with the genetics, I did a video recently about CRISPR uh, CPF1 and CRISPR Cas9. And they go on to say further a conventional DNA strand is made up of base pairings. The building blocks of the double helix are substances called adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, A, T, C, and G. That's how they represent it for us A, T, C, and G. They have um, news here in pictures. Pretty interesting stuff there as well. 
So generally speaking, the structure of the molecules comes from adenine binding with thymine and cytosine binding with guanine. But this is not the case with the I motif. The I motif is a four-stranded knot of DNA, said Professor Marcel Dinger, the study's other co-leader. In the knot structure, C, cytosine, letters on the same strand of DNA bind to each other. So this is very different from a double helix where letters on opposite strands recognize each other and where C's bind to guanines. In order to locate the eye motifs inside human cells, the scientists designed tiny probes that could recognize the DNA knot. So tiny doesn't mean um, you can see it with your eye. It doesn't mean the size of an ant. These are microscopic probes. Oligo, probably oligonucleotide probes because they're dealing with um, base pairs, nucleotide base pairs here. The probes were made using antibodies, Y-shaped molecules that bind with specific substances. And in order to test that, you have to use the oligonucleotide um, probe. And they usually have like a cassette that they use to test the efficiency of the antibodies. So you're testing for specificity and you're also testing for um, how specific it is and the tightness of the binding. Like, uh, so how specific the antibodies bind and how tight that binding is. In this case, the antibody was engineered so that it would attach itself to eye motifs, but not to any other form of DNA. The scientists added fluorescent dyes to the antibody probes, meaning they could then monitor where exactly the eye motifs were located in the cells. When they applied their probes to three different varieties of human cells, they identified fluorescent green spots appearing in the nucleus of each cell they looked at. What excited us most is that we could see the green spots, the eye motifs, appearing and disappearing over time. So we know that they are forming, dissolving, and forming again, said Dr. Mahid Zarati, whose research underpins the new paper. We think the coming and going of the eye motifs is a clue to what they do. It seems likely that they are, a, they are there to help switch genes on or off and to affect whether a gene is actively red or not. So if a gene is not read by the machinery that comes in to with polymerase activity, then the gene is not made into a protein. It has to be read. And once the gene is replicated or copied, it has to be edited. If the editing uh, software, because that's what it is, this is these are uh, microscopic machines. If the software is not edited properly it and it's made anyway, with a mistake, you have a mutation. If the software is, or the DNA, I'm using the term software for DNA. If the software is not um, copied and edited properly, it could also be discarded if it's caught in, in enough time. So they say the researchers also think this transient nature is the reason this form of DNA has eluded scientists for so long. It's exciting to uncover a whole new form of DNA in cells, said Professor Dinger. These findings will set the stage for a whole new push to understand what this new DNA shape is really for and whether it will impact, um, it will, I guess they meant it will have an impact on health and disease. So that's the end of the video, um, or this article, well, the end of my video as well. I'm trying to see if there are any comments below. Okay, here are some com comments down here. So there are 63 comments. I'm obviously not going to go through all of them. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of controversial statements based on this discovery, based on the implications of this discovery, as well as um, the, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a discovery. It's always been around, but it's been identified now. Now the last thing, the next thing to do is to determine what the function is of this new uh, eye motifs and why these structures are occurring at certain times. So I'm sure the next studies they do will be focused on um, treating these cells with certain 
external stimuli, like I said earlier, radiation. You can irradiate these cells with gamma and radiation. You can add different chemotherapies. You can add different drugs to the treatment, to the culture, when you're growing the cells on a Petri dish and you can see what effect that has on the, on the knots forming or not. Now, if they add, this is my hypothesis, but if they add radiation to these cells and they form several eye knots, eye, um, eye motifs, excuse me, several of these uh, knots form, then there's a very clear, at that point, very clear indication that you are adjusting the DNA. You are transforming the DNA structure of these cells, which would also lead to many other problems. Because as we know, as do, um, many professors have talked about this. I know um, I talk about uh, Dr. Phil Valentine. He talks about the effects of many um, chemicals and toxins and reagents that affect melanin. And some of those same toxins may, they could be exacerbating or uh, worsening the production of the eye knots or the eye motifs. I'm gonna call them eye knots because they're knots. And they call them, I think they call them eye because they, they shape, they look like an eye when they are stretched out. But they, the implications of that are dangerous because, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay. The implications of that are dangerous because they represent a catalyst for many conspiracy theories, of course, but also an alternative form of investigation where we can say, okay, let's stop using radiation on patients. There are a lot of companies that rely on radiation, that rely on chemotherapy. So if that was the case, if they just, you know, I'm just giving a hypothetical, but if they did those experiments and found out that radiation or any kind of chemotherapy or reagents that are used affects these eye knots by increasing their number or increasing their, um, organizational structure, as you see, then, um, or incre increasing their, their dissolving and reforming frequency, that could be devastating, particularly for the, for new generations that are being born. They could do these tests on young children, you know, in their, from their blood, they could do them on different types of cells. I wasn't able to, um, determine from this article what those cells are but I previously searched for on Google you can do this yourself as well role of I dash motifs so this is not a new concept this is 2018 you have articles here from 2016 where they've stabilized I motif structure by <clears throat> two beta fluorination of DNA so they fluorinated the DNA and if you know things about fluorination, using fluoride, not only is it in your toothpaste and your water, but they use that to disrupt DNA. So you can stabilize eye motif structures by adding 2-beta fluoride, 2-beta fluorination. They go down here talk about the importance of loop length on the stability of eye, mo eye motif structures. So they used ultraviolet and SRCD spectroscopy, I'm not sure what that is, but they've done this and they find that um, the thermal and pH stability is important for eye motif loop length. So that means that they're adding things to the media to increase the length of the eye motifs to stretch them out so they can study them better. That was in 2015, three years ago five years, or wait, what is this, three years ago? This is eight years ago. Making sense of G quadruplex and I motif functions in oncogene promoters. So oncogene promoters are um, promoters of the DNA that push the cell towards cancer. And oncogene is a gene involved in the development, the promotion, and the progression 
of cancer, even during treatment. They talk about supercoiling and conversion of duplex DNA to G quadruplex I motif DNA. They're investigating the stability and function of these I motifs. They have a PDF here from uh, Benabu. I'm not sure where that's from. Fundamental aspects of the nucleic acid I motif structures. That might be some, it's an abstract. Okay, so it's a review. There are many, many topics. So the point I'm making here is that this is not a new concept. 2012, G quadruplex and I motif are mutually exclusive and ILPR double stranded, probably double stranded DNA tetraplexes. So tetraplex is four. Quadruplex, or excuse me, yeah, tetraplex four, quadruplex four. BM, ILF, and I motifs, 2017. They go down here, they talk about I motifs. This is from two days ago. So this is the Nature Chemistry article that they talked about um, in the independent article that just published March 14th, 2018. Published, or accepted March 14th, published April 23rd. And let's see, I'm going to go down here. Hmm. They may have to have a, yeah, I think I have to have a, uh, right here it says you have to have a subscription. So if you look at this, $59 to subscribe for full access, meaning you have access to their data. You have to pay money to see their data. But you know what I'm going to do, which is what you should do when you find something interesting, especially like a science article like this is you go to Google images and that's that's what I do so these are the cells they used this is a picture from them from their paper MCF7 breast cancer cell U is breast cancer cells cell line U2OS that is I think fibroblast cell HeLa cells from Henrietta Lacks a black woman HeLa cells are cervical cancer cells those these is th these are the three cells they use <clears throat> excuse me to identify the I motif structures in the HeLa cells you can see on the right when they added DNA1 plus the I motif antibody. There's only a few, maybe two places within a nucleus that's showing up. MCF7 is a breast cancer cell line derived from a white female patient. You have more. Um, there's one in one of the cells and one, two, I think three in the other cell. One of them's kind of dim. I motif structure showing up. So then we come down here and they show their data with the expression. When they add different antibodies, you can see the expression change over time when you compare um, different treatments. So I hope the video wasn't too long, but it's important for us, as I said before, to look at things, and I, a Jedi, the Jedi has said this too, find things that you're not necessarily interested in. I do it all the time, you know, for work, but to find things that you may not be interested in, but learn how to think outside the box. Because there's a lot of research and a lot of science and technology that's been developed being developed right around us. A lot of it based on new ideas, new mechanisms being developed, and a lot of it based on old paradigms that are being challenged now. So I'll leave you with, <clears throat> with this, leave you um, now. I hope to be able to speak maybe on a hangout just about science one day. That's a goal of mine.
If not, that's fine. I, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate the discussions I have with all of you on other subjects. You know, just like I'm suggesting to you to look, think outside the box, I have to do the same thing. You know, I have to practice what I preach and I do that every day. I try to strive for that every day. So when it comes to politics and um, pop culture, things like that, I try to stay abreast of those things as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments in the comment section. I will leave a link to this article in the description box. Thank you very much for your attention. And as always, have a great day.